Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back to Ironclad RC. I got the Shrimp Outrigger on the block, on the block. This is part two of our Shrimp Outrigger build series. Uh, today we're going to be installing a stuffing tube in the boat, flex cable, motor, getting everything epoxied in place, kind of doing a dry fit, and uh, basically just kind of working on the boat. I got a couple other things I might throw in the video as well, so stick around, stick around. You might as well. You're here. Let's get to it, you guys. Let's get to it. Um, in my last episode, I kind of got you guys caught up on the build. You know, uh, showed you the boat in the process of the build. Uh, basically, the series is going to be basically just installing electronics, uh, steering setup, you know, stuffing tube, turn fins, uh, the whole nine. Basically, finalizing the boat. Uh, so today, we're actually going to install the the Rocket Twenty Nine Sixty Eight. 3400 kV brushless motor in the boat. I've got a four millimeter to 0.30 coupler. Okay, I've actually got a collet on the way for the boat. Okay, but we're going to be using the color for coupler for the setup of the stuffing tube. Uh, going to be using a 0 0.30 cable with an eighth prop shaft. All right, that's basically what came with the boat. This strut also came with the kit the kit was donated to the channel by g-man i appreciate it brother thank you um so yeah we're going to made up the stuffing tube to the strut make our bend all right we got to bend it to the motor uh this motor is actually really really big for this boat uh i don't really recommend this motor for this boat to be honest with you it's so freaking big i had to actually make a hatch to accommodate the motor and i'm hoping i'm hoping that the motor will actually work in the freaking boat i'm going to have to use this water cooling co coil for the motor uh, a water jacket will not fit in the boat with the hatch and the speed control okay so i'm gonna use this water cooling coil i've got two different motors to choose from i've got a 4000 kv and a 3400 kv uh i think i'm going to run the 3400 kv in the boat all right i would love to put the 4000 in there because it's just it's bad to the freaking boat and that 4000 is, is off the chain especially running the boat with smaller props okay i'm planning on running the boat with small props higher kv uh would be would be ideal for the boat um the higher kv motors will actually generate more heat less torque more heat more rpm so I, I'm thinking I'm going to go with the lower KV motor because I'm not running a, a, a cooling jacket. Okay, the, the coil's not quite as efficient as a cooling jacket. So I'm going to run a lower KV motor to compensate for the heat. Okay, you, you feel me? So, um, so let's get the motor mounted up in the boat. I've actually filed filed my holes, elongated my holes a little bit more up and down. Uh, basically, I'm going to mount the motor a little bit higher than the stock configuration. All right, I can do it because I have my hatch, and I also need to do it because I'm planning on laying down my ESC in the deck of the boat right here. All right, basically going to go like right there. All right, my ESC is going to go lay down right there, and then my motor will basically basically be sitting in the boat hopefully not touching the esc but i'm gonna try to slide this esc back as far as i can get it so i have room to put my battery in the boat gonna be running this 2200 milliamp 3s 50c pack all right so basically i have just enough room to fit my battery in my speed control and my motor all right it's gonna be a tight fit with this water cooling coil Let's get to it. Let me quit jacking my freaking jaws. Let's get to it. You know what we're doing? I'm going to go ahead and get the motor installed. Okay, I'll take this ESC out. Get the motor installed with my flex driver right here. Okay, makes it easy. Boom, boom, boom. I actually, whenever I'm, I'm setting my screws on my flex driver, getting into a tight place, I actually use a star bit. It fits those... 2.5 is a lot better so your screw don't fall off. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the motor mounted up. I'll see you when I'm done.
so I got the motor in. I got the coil on there, made sure my hatch is going to fit. I'm running my motor about three millimeters higher than the stock, the highest stock position. Like I said, I filed it out. I got a coupler on there. I don't recommend a coupler. You know, I actually recommend a collet for a flex cable. I'm just going to use the coupler to get it set up. I have my collet coming. Um, this strut called for a 730 seconds brass tube. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm running a no liner with this boat. I really don't like liners, so I went down in stuffing tube size to a 316th stuffing tube, 3.130 cable with no liner, eighth prop shaft. All right, I had to shim up strut. All right, with this smaller stuffing tube with no liner, it's a little bit of play, as you guys can see. When you got a little bit of play, a little gap in your stuffing tube to strut connection water will be forced in the strut and a lot of times it'll go into the stuffing tube and in the boat so i shimmed it up with a stepped up stuffing tube size i had to actually modify it sand it down to fit i got it to fit perfect kind of tapered the end so it's hydrodynamic i want to measure how long i need to cut my stuffing tube okay so i got it slid into the coupler there collet and I'm just going to take a magic marker and and mark the back side of the, the cable. Okay, that's uh that's the longest my stuffing tube will be. It won't be, it will not be any longer than that. You know, I marked it on the back side of the strut. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my stuffing tube to a, a roundabout length. Okay, so we can start prepping it up for the bend. Okay, so I'm going to cut it. I'm gonna cut it uh I'm gonna cut it a little bit short because the cable is actually in the collet and the stuffing tube won't be in the collet. So I'm gonna cut it a little bit short. About right there. Yeah, so that's gonna be a little bit long, and that's what I want. A little bit long. I can trim it up later on. Uh, pipe cutter works pretty good for cutting stuffing tubes. And then we'll trim it to length once it's all installed into the boat. Alright, I got it in the collet, got it in the strut. You can kind of see, you see the bend I got in it right there? It's in the collet. Alright, you can kind of see what kind of bend you're going to need to put in it. You know? With it just sitting in the boat. So you kind of get an idea of uh, what you need to do to the stuffing tube to get it bent correctly. Now I, I bend my stuffing tube by hand. I don't use no fancy tube benders or I don't put it in the freezer and bend it with water in it and all that kind of craziness. I just, uh, you know, if it's a thicker stuffing tube, I actually will put a little bit of heat on it, but um, I'm pretty confident, fairly confident I can bend it without putting a kink in it. You know, slowly work that bend in. All right, so I'm gonna, uh, get started on that I uh, got it lined up to my collet it goes right in there I mean it's dead like dead nuts in line with the motor angle all right so uh, we need to epoxy it into the boat all right you guys see that void at the bottom got this big void right here that we need to actually fill up with epoxy. So what I'm going to do is use tape over that over that hole. All right. So whenever I put epoxy in there, the tape will basically dam. It's like a tape dam, epoxy dam. Epoxy three separate times. You know, a little bit here, a little bit in the back, and then we'll finalize it, top and bottom. Okay. So it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to use this little pecan pie tin. I love these little pecan pies that come in these little tins, man. I'm like freaking addicted to them. I've got like a whole stack of these things now. I'm going to use 5 minute JB Weld Epoxy for the through hole there for the stuffing tube. And I'm not going to mix up a whole lot. Get it in, get it done real quick. You ain't got to wait 24 hours. 
basically just want it on this front part of the stuff until I get everything lined up. Alright, so I'm not going to use all that epoxy. I'm trying to keep this boat as light as I can. You know, take your time, do it right, make sure everything's lined up. Let's go ahead and get the cable cut to size. With this particular cable right here, it goes halfway into the strut. And the bushing in the back actually, like, it rides on that bushing. Okay, kind of like the 42 in a way. Kind of rides on the bushing right there. All right, so we're going to put this bushing on the strut and mark where the bushing ends on the strut so we know kind of where to cut our cable. All right, so it's basically pushed up onto the strut like it was going in, and I'm going to mark it on my strut. All right, so I know my, my bushing basically goes to right there, okay? Then when my cable's in there, it's basically going to stop right here. You got me? Alright, so I'm going to trim up the cable just a little bit. So what I'm going to do, run it into the collet, bottom it out on the motor shaft, and mark my cable. Okay, now let's get a ruler and measure, measure it out. Alright, so I'm going to mark it right here. That's where it's going to end. So we're going to we're going to measure from the end of the cable where we had it in the collet to our mark on the cable. All right. Um, let's see. I got my ruler backwards. Yep. All right. So seven inches. So we're going to take from the mark on the shaft and measure out seven inches. Alright, seven inches is right here, and I'm actually going to cut it long, because I am freaking human. Alright, so I'm going to make a circle all the way around. So I found using a cutting wheel for your cable actually works the best, you guys. Uh, you know, I don't recommend using a hacksaw. Not saying a hacksaw wouldn't work, but, uh, you know, they tend to fray the cables up. Uh, I got a hole drilled in this block of wood right here. To hold my cable in place and then I'm just gonna cut it all right and you just round off the end a grinding wheel works the best now let's see where it's at here I left it a little bit long on purpose because I don't have my coupler my coupler could be different so I left it a little bit long let's take out this bushing here and see where it's at It's bottoming out in the motor shaft, so it's probably on the money. Alright, let's put this on. It looks like I cut it quite a bit too long. But we'll get it worked down. So basically, basically my next cut, I would cut exactly that much from, from the bushing to the strut. I cut that much off. I measured it and cut that much off and it fits perfect okay it's bottomed out on my motor shaft right there got a little room for play not much just a little bit of room to play so you don't like uh bottom it out on the bushing or bottom it out up here all right so i actually rounded off my cable end see how i rounded it i'll probably round it a little bit more and then i'll actually dip it in solder later on but uh, that's how you cut your cable. So let's go ahead and get the epoxy finished. We got like two or three more applications inside and outside. Let's go ahead and get on it. Perfect alignment to my collet. All right, perfect alignment. So now, now we could take off the tape. Let's see how it come out on the bottom here. See if that worked. Nice, nice. It worked out good. Use it. Use the tape as an epoxy dam. You see that? All right. So we could fill that in, and I'm gonna put some tape right there on the back side, and we're gonna epoxy the back side. Okay. Kind of shove it in between the 
stuffing tube in the boat. That way we don't have any leaks. All right, so I'm gonna kind of set my boat up at an angle so I can drip it in the boat. All right, I'll fast forward through it. Same deal we did it previous. Rough it up and put some five minute epoxy all the way around the stuffing tube. You know, kind of dress it up a little bit, make it look nice and neat around the stuffing tube, kind of hydrodynamic. Boom! Huh. Looks good, right? Looks good. I got the, the transom all cleaned up, sanded, you know, the through holes cut flush. I got my stuffing tube mounted up. The epoxy's all done drying inside and out. All I have to do is just sand it to shape. Do my final sanding. It still needs to kick off a little bit more before I start sanding on it. Um got my my cable cut to size i actually earlier when i cut it i didn't have my screw in the in this strut right here and um i actually probably need to shorten up my cable just a touch more but i'll wait like i said till i get my coupler to do that uh so it's actually fits perfect right now per like perfect fit like perfect so i got my 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 rudder broke loose here all right, I took out the brass screw. The rudder will actually kick up if you hit something. Okay, so I'm actually gonna set my boat down on a flat surface here so you guys can see what the strut looks like. All right, on my ironclad rigger, I run about that angle right there. That actually puts a little bit of down pressure on the front of the boat and kind of keeps it down in a straight. All right, so that's my angle all right right there and uh we're done we're done basically done with the stuffing tube installation the cable installation um gonna wait for everything to kick off i need to grease it up before i spool it up for you guys that will actually be in the next episode that next episode we're going to make some turn fins we're going to get them installed onto the boat install the esc and uh kind of basically basically finalize the boat in the next episode all right so we've still got quite a bit of stuff to do but uh the video is already long i actually walked you through the whole freaking process start to finish stuffing tube and cable installation on any boat this will basically work for any boat with a submerged drive all right this is a submerged drive setup uh, riggers actually call for a submerged drive setup. I've ran surface drives on riggers with, uh, and it don't work. It don't work. Not saying it, it wouldn't work, but I don't think it works as good as a submerged drive. Submerged drives get the back of the boat up, lowering the AOA for a smoother ride. So I appreciate you watching, uh, part two of the shrimp outrigger build series. All right. Ring the bell to get notified for the next part app part of the build series or future builds future projects we'll see you guys next time huh my 50 or 60 mile an hour boat right here boys hopefully i can get 60 out of it we'll see you next time